Hi, welcome to Health Watch. I'm Cindy Berry from Ledgelight Health District. It seems almost every day we hear about in the news the sad consequences of underage drinking or using uh, substances. Today we have an important program for you about the Ledger Safe Teens Coalition. My guests today are Karenza Mansfield from Ledgelight Health District and Mike Finkelstein, who is the mayor of Ledger. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So a couple of months ago, I had the privilege of interviewing Carolyn about the GASP Coalition. Mm -hmm. And so it really feels like it's important to now talk a little bit about the Ledger Safe Teens Coalition. Sure. And Karenza, maybe you could talk a little bit about when it was established and why. Sure, um, the Ledger Safe Teens Coalition uh, was established in 2007 to prevent underage drinking. Um, since that time, we've really evolved to, um, well, first of all, we changed our name mm -hmm. to the Ledger Prevention Coalition. We felt it was important to take out the safe teens part of it because what we're doing is so much more than just um, protecting teenagers. We're working with all community sectors to prevent substance abuse across the board. Mm -hmm. So um, we wanted our name to reflect that and be more inclusive. So, mm -hmm. and um, our mission is to provide a drug-free environment for Ledger. Mm -hmm. And so what is your role as the coordinator? How do, what do you do as coordinator of the coalition? Um, my role is really to engage um, all the different community sectors from parents, teenagers, um, law enforcement, civic, faith community, the schools, um, I'm sure I'm missing a couple other ones, mm -hmm. but to really bring them to the table to talk about what we're doing to prevent substance use among um, within Ledger. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's you know it's something that's in the news all the time. Most recently, Prince's death, I think, yeah. really has uh, brought upon a lot of discussion. Yep. Um, I, and also, I think people are trying to define what substance abuse is. So maybe right. can you share what your definition is? Um, sure. Uh, I think the simplest way to describe uh, substance abuse is really um, overindulging in a substance or um, becoming dependent on an addictive substance. Mm -hmm. I think that's the easiest way to define it. Um, mm -hmm. so. And is there really a need for a prevention coalition in Ledger? Actually, there is. Um, you know, like I said, the coalition was established in 2007, and since that time, we've done a youth survey every two years. Um, most recently, we did one in 2015, in which we surveyed the youth from seventh to twelfth grade, mm -hmm. self to twelfth grade, and um, what we found was uh, that marijuana is actually the second drug of choice um, after alcohol. We also learned that the perception of harm among teenage or perception of harm of use of marijuana is very low, mm. um, specifically in the 12th grade. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing that we saw from our most recent data is that um, if you look at the 30 day prevalence use, ledgered seniors are um, slightly using more than their peers across the region and across the nation as mm -hmm. a whole. So those are really important measures. And Mike, let's bring you into the conversation. You're a former police officer, for those people that don't know you. Um, did any of this surprise you? No, and I think <clears throat> the, the data that's, that's come out in this last survey really is consistent with a lot of things that we see in the community. And you know, understanding that perception of harm, and I think beyond, you know, what Karenz has pointed out with marijuana, the perception of harm for prescription medications has certainly become an issue, and that's not just in Ledger, that's across the board in society. And I think that's been part and parcel to the larger opiate addiction that we're that we're experiencing mm -hmm. in this country. And it, you know, Ledger is no different than those other places. And you know, this is an issue that is ex that is so widespread. Everybody really needs to get on board and understand the dangers that exist. Right, and I'm sure, I mean, you're not gonna take your eye off of alcohol and, and other drugs, but opiates are something that is of particular concern, especially for young people who right. have it's, access to It that. certainly is, and I think, you know, not just in Ledger, but ac you know, across um, Eastern Connecticut and really Connecticut as a, as a whole, mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to take a look at how do we instill that education of the harm that prescription pills can, can uh, lead to. We look at the surveys that come out and, you know, as Karenza can attest to, 
kids don't believe that prescription pills are dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which leads to sometimes, you know, you hear stories about parties where prescription pills are, are distributed and, and, and widespread use is happening. But also the situations where people are taking them not because they have pain, not because they have injury, just entertainment value or to, to do it recreationally. Right. That's becoming an issue because you have people that legitimately are getting you know, hooked on opiates because they have an injury, they have right. surgery, they have something that leads to it. Mm -hmm. But you have another kind of avenue that's happening where people are taking it just to start taking them and then all of a sudden they're getting hooked on a very, very mm -hmm. addictive substance and now what is the route that they're going to go? And that's when we have a lot of the issues right. we're having now. And in combination with alcohol, they could care. be very deadly. Certainly. Um, what about heroin? You know, kind of, we keep hearing about that link from pain pills to heroin. Right. Well, you know, the, can the, you the, talk the, a little bit about that? What that link is? The sad reality is, is when somebody becomes addicted to an opiate, mm -hmm. you know, their body needs that, and if they're not going to get the pro proper treatment and follow through with that treatment, mm -hmm. they're going to continue to need to use that opiate. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, heroin is far cheaper on the black market than those pills are to purchase. So people are starting to use heroin who may just have started with a prescription right. uh, pill addiction and moving to heroin because of need to feed that addiction. The biggest problem that's happening is that heroin in many, many cases, and you've seen it around Eastern yeah, Connecticut, yep. uh, you know, amplified, is being spiked with other, you know, other types of medications and other types of drugs mm -hmm. that are far more dangerous than heroin. And that's mm -hmm. leading to, a, in many cases, a lot of the overdose mm -hmm. deaths that are happening. And do you notice, but I mean, I'll, I'll just throw this question out, do you notice that there's a certain amount of denial on the part of the community? Like, oh, heroin, that's for New York City, or that's for LA, or? I, I think one, one fortunate piece is, I think we're really starting to overcome that. Yeah, I think good. that's where something like, like this coalition and some mm -hmm. other groups that are out there, um, really, you know, putting the spotlight on it and taking that stigma away from it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, unfortunately, for a long time, put their head in the sand and said, we're not going to admit we have a problem or we don't have a problem. And, and as you said, that problem is somewhere else. And we all need to realize that problem is in our neighborhoods, in our backyards, and it's everywhere. Yeah. And we have to address that and have to be willing to address it, which mm -hmm. with anybody who has an addiction, that's the first step. The first step is admitting that there's a problem. And you know, we as a society and we as organizations you know, are, are really pushing that point where we do have an issue. And it's not exclusive to one town, one community. Everybody has that issue. It's a society problem. Right. Well, it's really wonderful that Ledgerd has a coalition, and maybe you can talk real briefly about some of the activities that you're doing to raise awareness in the community. Sure. Um, just to follow up with the opiates, um, these opiates, one thing we're trying to do is decrease the access. Um, so we're really promoting our prescription drug take back box, which is located at the police department. Um, we're providing education to parents and to teenagers, you know, um, again, going back to the opiates, um, that they are highly, highly addictive, whereas one person can take it and be okay, but another person could take an opiate and become instantly addicted, mm -hmm. and then you're on this mm -hmm. revolving door of trying to get off. Mm -hmm. um, Let's talk a little bit about the take back box mm -hmm. and how that works, so, uh, you know, just so people in the community know. They can go to the police department anytime. Twenty four seven. You know the box is in the lobby. There's no questions asked. Mm -hmm. There are some rules with the box, and rules meaning certain types of medications are not allowed: liquids, needles, inhalers. They have to be pill form, okay. you know, to, to go in into the box. But you know, we find, and we have found since we've implemented this box a couple of years ago, it has a tremendous use. Uh, mm -hmm. It's amazing how much is being disposed of mm -hmm. there. And as we continue to educate the public, I think we get more and more people that are recognizing the need to do that. You listen to some people that have been involved in addiction. You listen to some of their stories about how it manifested. Many of them say, you know, if they became addicted as a, a teen or a young adult. You know, they would go to their friends' houses and go through their parents' medicine cabinets yeah. and look for those medications. Certain which, desperation right. kicks but, in. But you know, which is why it becomes you know so important that if you have unused prescription medications, especially opioids and especially um, high-strength um, pain relievers, mm -hmm. that those are disposed of when they're not being utilized anymore. And you know, from the law enforcement side of me, we saw many, many burglaries which happened in houses that were drug fueled and that was one of the things that was always looked for is mm -hmm. the medicine cabinets were gone through, they were looking for prescription medications to take. Mm -hmm. So where does the funding come from uh, to help support your coalition? We um, actually have federal funding from the Office of National Drug Control Policy 
and it's funneled through an agency, a federal agency called SAMHSA, Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. Mm -hmm. So we receive um, funding from them. Mm -hmm. So it's something that's pretty common. A lot of communities receive this funding. Mm -hmm. Um, and what are some of the things that you're doing currently with the funding? Well, um, we're six months into our grant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a coordinator, I'm still doing a lot of capacity building, making sure I have all the players um, on board. We're really trying to get our name out there. You know, we just recently changed our name to the Ledger Prevention Coalition. Um, we're, we're promoting our lockbox. So um, you know, we're working with a local pharmacist to help us promote that. We are in the process of um, creating our marketing campaign for this summer. Mm -hmm. um, summer tends to be a quiet time, you know, a lot of vacations, so we're going to do a, a radio campaign and kind of keep the, the momentum going throughout the summer. Um, That's great. What else? Yeah. So it really does kind of go off of one of the things that she's talking about, too, is the coalition part is important. It's, mm -hmm. it's wide ranging. It isn't simply just a small group that gets together. And the goal is to incorporate as many pieces of our society as possible. Mm -hmm. Education, law enforcement, library. You know, right. we're, we're trying to be as widespread as possible to mm -hmm. get as many disciplines into the coalition. So the more we have in, the more we have going out. Sure. Exactly. So we're going to take a break real quick. And then we'll come back and talk about how people can sign up for the coalition. Right. Stay with us. Oh, hey, bud. Where, uh, where are you headed? Uh, I'm just gonna hang out. With Gary and Todd? Yeah. I've been meaning to ask you, is there any drinking going on in this crowd? No. If any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I'd do anything to keep you safe. Okay, I will. I hope this is working. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. and I am a heart recipient. I got my first heart transplant when I was one and a half years old. I got my second heart when I was 13. When I get my driver's license, of course I'm gonna say yes to be an organ donor. I've been saved twice. So who says I can't save somebody else? This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Your sneeze produces 5,000 bacteria-filled droplets, and they can travel 10 feet. So sneeze into your sleeve, and you'll reduce the spread of infection. Get the facts. It's good for you, Connecticut. It's good for all of us. to Health Watch. We're talking today about the Ledger Prevention Coalition with Carenza Mansfield from Ledgelight Health District and Mike Finkelstein, who is the mayor of Ledger. Um, we talked a little bit about what the coalition has been doing. Let's talk about how do you become a coalition member? Sure. Um, just sign up, come to our meetings. Um, when do you meet? We meet monthly. Mm -hmm. And um, right now, um, we've done a couple of things that people could have been involved in. Um, actually, tomorrow, I'm heading up with a coalition member to a marijuana policy boot camp. Um, so we try to provide opportunities for coalition members to learn more about mm -hmm. substance abuse. Um, me and another coalition member, is we're going to be attending the National Coalition Academy. So um, we try to provide incentives for people to be involved and really to come to the table to share their, what they're doing in terms of substance abuse prevention, whether they're on the treatment side or prevention side, mm -hmm. and how we can have all our um, strategies work together. Mm -hmm. Mike, do you want to add anything to that? How has it been being a coalition member? Well, it's, 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 been, it's been great. You know, I, I've, I've been fortunate to have been involved in the coalition 
prior to being mayor with the police department for, for many years and, and coming back to it now. Um, I, I think Carenza does an outstanding job and it's great to have the, the ability to have this coalition together. And, and for example, several weeks ago at Ledger High School, we held, we held a training for parents on social media use and really it gave the opportunity for parents to learn from a recent graduate of Ledger mm -hmm. High School. That's great. You know, what different types of social media are and, and you really think about it and when you're looking at Snapchat, you're looking at um, Instagram and other, other ways to communicate and other ways that show, you know, kids are communicating on a constant basis, it's important for parents to understand that and you know, how that filters into prevention is really understanding your child's friends, understanding mm -hmm. yeah. what they're actually doing. Um, and I think the parents that stay involved with their kids generally have better success and it's really, you know, one of the key things I think as a prevention coalition, we want to not just look at, at children, we want to look at all of our society and finding out what type of information we can get out there and education we can provide. Mm -hmm. And are you noticing that citizens are really, ex you know, kind of enthusiastic about this? Um, because it seems like so many times in the news you hear it took a tragedy to bring the community together. Yeah, um, right. unfortunately I think what's happening is a lot of the, the things that are happening around our society with um, heroin and opiate addiction is really leading people to listen mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. um, right. And that is, you know, again it goes back to the a tragedy, some, it takes tragedy sometimes to, to have people act, um, but that's where we're standing right now. And, you know, we're trying to take that situation and put it into a positive, get people educated, get people out. Um, we had a, a um, forum at Ledger High School going back several months ago mm -hmm. where we had Shine a Lot and Heroin come in during the day. Oh, how was that? We had an outstanding presentation mm -hmm. which was very well, well received mm -hmm. by the students at Ledger High School. A lot of great feedback. Um, you know, just really the educational you know, piece is just, tremendous. Yeah, and I was just thinking, I mean, teenagers have to be just as scared as grown-ups are about this. Do you know what I mean? Because they're hearing about their friends sure. and they have concerns about their friends and may not know where to go right. to and, for and help. I, and I think right. a, bi a big portion of that is, you know, that, I don't want to say youthful exuberance, but understanding that mm -hmm. that risk is there, but really comprehending that, that risk. Sure. I think what we find a lot of times is they may recognize it may be dangerous, but they don't really truly grasp why and how it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're trying to be able to do is fully educate them and educate their parents on why is this a danger and how do we prevent this from happening. You hear the stories from the people that have been involved in addiction, the parents of people that have been involved in addiction, those are extremely powerful stories mm -hmm. that you know their tragedies hopefully we can utilize to prevent other people from going down those same paths. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And you mentioned an event that's coming up. Oh yes, we're going to be uh, marching in the Ledger Memorial Day Parade. So look for us. We will be throwing out uh, balls to okay. all the spectators. Okay, that's great. Hopefully it won't be the hottest day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. And w we talked about this a little bit, but I really do have to ask about the biggest challenges. Like what is, you know, when you're like driving home at night and you're thinking about, gosh, if we could only what? Um, you need to be patient. Um, you know, I the first thing that comes to mind when I think about the work that we do is um, I look at tobacco. Um, that's such a good example of where we were 20 years ago with tobacco to where we are now. You know, it took a lot of beating the pavement and teaching people about why tobacco is harmful, why it's bad for you. And here we are 20 years later and it's no one smokes really yeah. it's it's you know if they are smoking they're hiding you know yeah. it's not openly smoking in public like it used to be and so it's hard to stay motivated at times but that's that's why you really need a coalition of people um, and you need to continue to educate and to really stay on top of things. Yeah, I mean, that's a great example because remember 16 years ago, you and I were trying to get restaurants to go smoke free. Mm -hmm. And now it's like people don't even think about it anymore. I know. And a lot of kids that are growing up now, they've never had to inhale tobacco or cigarette smoke at a restaurant. Right. So that's, that's a really wonderful point. Um, what about some protective factors? We're going into summer now and that's a time where kids have a little more free time on their hands and, and people are outside and enjoying recreation. What are some of the things that you're concerned or think about uh, when you think about kids in the summer? Well, one thing I think is you know, going back to the parents and going back to the mm -hmm. relationship of parents understanding and knowing what their kids are doing. Um, you know, as a parent myself, I understand sometimes that's difficult to really pay attention or to always know where your child is and what they're doing, but it's also important to 
really stay on top of who their friends are, what activities they're involved in, and really limit the opportunities they have to become involved, involved in destructive um, type behaviors. Right. I think you know sometimes, and statistics really do show, kids that have open-ended free time all the time, you know, a lot of cases tend to start getting into more and more trouble because more experimentation happens and more unsupervised activities happen. So, you know, I think from a town standpoint and from a law enforcement standpoint is understanding that, you know, parents have that kind of responsibility and society wants to, and we as a, as a coalition really want to support them in that, mm -hmm. but making sure that everybody communicates and pays attention to what's going on. And having um, expectations from your kids and setting clear rules and enforcing them. Kids need boundaries. You know, you need them as a little baby and you need them when you're a teenager too. So. Sometimes you need them as a grown up, <laughs> as a grown up right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well I wanna thank you both for being here and I know Carenza, you've been doing this for a very long time. I, I just wanna ask you what's been the most rewarding part of it for um, you? I think it, it's really the people I work with, um, you know, and seeing you know, where we have, you know, the tobacco thing. It's a good example. You know, it took that long, but we did it. And I hope in 15 years from now, we'll see um, a big decrease in substance abuse and, you know, kids being healthy and mm -hmm. substance free. Wonderful. And what about you, Mike, as mayor? Well, you have some expectations. I, I do have expectations. I have to go, I mean, going back to when I was a DARE officer for years and you know, it's, it's interesting or, or really rewarding 20, 25 years later now to get some of the feedback from people that are in their 30s having kids who tell you the impact that you had mm -hmm. on them and how you were able to kind of keep them out of trouble. Um, and, and really in my mind going forward to being mayor and, and you know, the role I'm in now is mm -hmm. rolling that over and continuing to do that and help Carenza and, and you know, the coalition do that for Next, the next generation of kids that are coming up and, and instilling them the ability to, to really make good decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's wonderful. You both have been in your positions for a long time, so you probably have people that approach you at the grocery store or mm -hmm. someplace in the community mm -hmm. and say thank you for you know, the things that you've been able to accomplish. Yep, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you both very much, and thank, thank you. you for tuning in to Health Watch today. If you have any questions, please give us a call at Ledge Light Health District. Have a great day.